No. Mm -mm. Heck no. Heck no. Welcome to Puzzle with Emilia, that's me, and today we're talking about the one and only the World EXA Puzzle Championship 2023 that was just last week. So anyway, I have to warn you first because my voice is absolutely down. I gave my absolutely everything to that event and now I'm a little bit sick. So that's the reason behind it. But I really wanted to share more of like raw feelings from the event already now. So I'm going to walk you through all the categories, uh, share my thoughts, my experience with the commentating, uh, the pros and cons of the event. So let's start with that. So basically the event started off with the individual category. I was in the group F, which was the last group uh, of the first uh, competition day. Uh, I think uh, 9 p.m. it would be like 10 p.m. in the Finnish time, so it was very late for me. And I was completely nervous wrecked the whole day. If you know me, you know how much I love to speculate. So when the A group started and they had this puzzle and I was like, wait, 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 what? Like, how is this in the qualifying rounds? Because at least to me, nature edition puzzles are very hard. So I was like very confused. And I was like, okay, so there's gonna be like hard puzzles all through the qualification round. So the more I was confused when the next group B got this puzzle, which is basically well, not same, but kind of same, same puzzle as last year and like very different level than the Nature Edition. So at this point I was like, okay, you know what? The puzzle choices are so all over that it can be anything at this point. As much as I didn't really see any logic behind the puzzle choices already on the first day, I think in the end it was quite nice that they showed really different kind of puzzles. So all the, also the people who were watching the live stream who don't do puzzles kind of maybe got the idea that it's not always about the person. Uh, it's also about the puzzle because some puzzles are just harder. So uh, as we always say, you cannot really compare two different puzzles. So in that, that wise, I think it was quite nice that they showcased a lot of different kind of puzzles during the whole competition. But anyway, let me think what you, your thoughts are about all the puzzle choices in the world, because I think it was pretty interesting. And uh, yeah, so as I was waiting for my turn the whole day, I remember saying to my husband that I think there is gonna be another Nature Edition puzzle eventually. Uh, probably to the D, E or F group. So I was just hoping that the D or E group will have it. So then I can be sure that it's not going to be in my group. Well, what happened? Well, of course I got also the other Nature Edition puzzle in my qualification round. And not only Nature Edition, I also got a Panorama puzzle, which was the only Panorama we saw in the whole individual competition. So, yeah. So I have done one, one panorama puzzle in my life. So it was a good thing for me because I kind of knew that it's, it's very long. Obviously you understand panorama is long, but it's actually even longer than you think, especially if you're like more familiar with the regular size puzzles. And I also knew that the, this like kind of end part here, it's like literally just two rows. Because I think uh, if you don't realize that, you don't uh, realize uh, in time to actually put already the corner pieces to the puzzle. And it helps a lot if you realize that, oh, they're already coming here. But anyway, uh, the camera missed me in the live stream when I finished this puzzle. I was 16th in my qualification round. And as I said, the camera did miss a lot of people during the competition. So maybe not everybody got an applause, so I want to applause. This is for everybody. 
everybody did a great job there. I wish everybody could have been shown, but I understand there's only a couple of cameramen and so many people finishing their puzzles at the same time. Okay, so here is the live stream of my first qualification qualification round. Um, let's see, I'm supposed to be somewhere here soon. Yeah, that's me. Yay! So you can see I actually do puzzle standing in a competition. I was laughing myself so hard because sometimes you're like too tired to stand, so you're gonna start sitting. And the moment that my butt literally touches the chair, I'm already like, nope, this is not working and just like getting back up right, right after that. Oh, so painful to watch yourself. Oh, she is so fast. I mean, I should have also done like uh, starting to do the darker pieces from this direction. I don't know why I was so like determined to just do it all the way from here to here when I could have come like from both directions. Oh yeah, this one. So I got the sky ready. Uh, as you can see here, it's literally just two rows after these kind of like different kind of pieces and the borders. So I was literally just trying to look the most yellow pieces and then just did, 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 like try it out everywhere. Yeah, I'm actually surprised so many people did the border first, like the frame. I was kind of doing it. Well, now we cannot see because it will end so. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think I actually put some pieces of the border in the very end. So I'm not really like, yeah. Well, anyway, let's get back to the studio and move on. I think I already got like two good learnings from the qualification round, which is like, I need to start practicing on doing also <laughs> panorama puzzles. Yes, of course. Uh, but then also because it was so late, I realized that I never kind of do puzzles in this, like, I don't know, call it, do you call it synthetic or artificial light? I only do puzzles in our house in natural light because we have such a huge windows. So I should definitely also practice uh, with a different kind of light because obviously you need to kind of cal calibrate your eyes to it. And I also have a really bad sight, so I need to use glasses and stuff. So those were the two key points to uh, take for the next year. I believe we can all agree what was the most exciting moment in the qualification rounds and that was the epic battle in Group D between Alejandro and Kati. That, that was crazy and I was actually surprised that the commentators had no idea who Kati is. Because I call it already day before in my social media that Kati may win the whole competition. But that moment, that was like so epic. That moment was so good for Yiksa Puzzles as a sport. It was so intense. I was in my hotel room, like almost banging on the table that go Kati, go. <laughs> and only 60 seconds behind, I think she did great in the whole competition. That was amazing. Let's watch it again. Oh my god, this is so interesting. I'm gonna actually put a little bit of sound because you can oh, hear yes. the the background was like oh. the crowd is just getting rowdy in here. Wow. Oh my god. People cheering before oh my the winner god. is called. Oh there <laughs> I mean congratulations also to Alejandro and you know being the world champion and every year. This was just uh, oh my god. Like this that. was so crazy. So then we got to the semifinals and I was in the second group of the semifinals and there it was what I've been talking for months, the round puzzle. Now you may ask me, I've been talking about the round puzzle. I have not practiced with the round puzzle solo. I only done one with my pair, the other Emilia. So I think this kind of goes to the category of do as I say and not as I do because oh my god I felt so stupid at this point and also so when I saw that they had a round puzzle for the first group of the semifinals I remember even talking with a lot of people that I don't think they will put um, 
round puzzle for the second group because it feels so obvious that people would be now like going to see the catalogs and and stuff and since i saw the puzzles on the uh, yeah, qualification rounds i thought that yeah you know it's gonna be just something completely else but nope this is what i got and at this point i've only done a panorama puzzle and a round puzzle and not any of the regular size puzzles that I actually mainly practice with. And I think my biggest problem was this, that uh, I usually do a shape shorting in the end, and you can't really do it with this one. So I was really like just slowing down because usually I start fast. I think most people do this way. Start fast, then a little bit slowing in the middle and then start going really fast as you're having less pieces left. But I was just going slower and slower and slower. And in the end, I placed with my time a 61st. However, I was one minute behind the other Finnish person in my group, and you know, because there was this country rule uh, that the best part is different from each country, I was not sure at that point if I actually will qualify for the finals. I think it took them like three hours to calculate those. It was so nerve-wracking, uh, but I made it. I made it to the final. That was very happy moment and funny thing is my husband who never does puzzles got so excited about this that he actually finished this when we got back to the hotel it took like six hours or so but now he's actually doing a lot of puzzles after that so good influence from us good job good job everybody and then finally on the finals i got to do a regular size 500 piece puzzle this one and I was so happy even though this is not really my type of puzzle but if you saw my previous video you know the puzzles that I practice uh, while I was in the Middle East because I was kind of calling that it's gonna be a scenery I don't know if they count this as a scenery or buildings but to me this was scenery and very similar to the puzzles I did I ended up as 81st um, with the time of 1 hour 3 minutes and 50, 57 seconds and uh, let's take a look at that again because finally I got myself to the live stream and I was also so happy about Oh, it. I was so happy here. I think the one thing that maybe not everybody understands who are watching uh, the live stream, we're not competing, but you don't, you don't actually have no idea like how you're doing at this point. You don't know how many people already like finished. You have no idea what's your time. Um, so basically every time I finished something, I just, you know, uh, made sure somebody got my time, put the puzzle away, and then I walked to my husband and I was like, how did I do? Like, where's the results? How, what was my, like, what was my time? And uh, how many people before me? So I think it just, you know, you can see the faces and, you know, the relief on people's faces that they are just so happy to finish. It's not... Moving on to the Paris category. So me, Emilia Lieberman, and my pair, Emilia Korhonen, aka Team Emilius, were ready to rock and roll. Well, in the qualification round for pairs, we actually got a puzzle that I've done a long time ago uh, solo. I don't know if that was a much of an advantage because the only thing I had kind of like this insight was that this is hard and kind of sucks. And that seemed to be still true. <laughs> So I don't know how much that helped other than maybe mentally it was a little bit easier because I know that this is a puzzle that you just get stuck with um, a lot of time. So I don't know, maybe that helps somehow. And I think this is actually the second thing I'm very like a little bit confused uh, about with all the puzzle choices in the competition because I feel like especially in the qualification rounds, like I own almost like half of those puzzles that I saw, or at least I've seen in every store, in every shelf in Finland. I don't know how is it in your country, maybe those puzzles look new to you, but I was like, I, I felt like they only had like the best sellers there. And I was like, why didn't you take like some, like reproduce some uh, old puzzles from old catalogs or something? Because I feel like it gives kind of advantage if you actually have done 
the puzzle before, especially in the individual category, but hmm, I don't know. What do you think? Oh, there we are. I felt so stuck with this puzzle. I actually started doing the frames first and I, I could not finish the frames. I just stitched them and did them actually later. And here you can see my, my back was hurting so bad, but I was so happy that we finished. And oh, there's my husband taking a picture of us. Anyway, we placed 14th in our qualification round. That was pretty awesome. But then the final. And to be honest, I'm still not over this. I'm very pissed. This is one of the few things I'm really pissed about this event because what the F is this? Like seriously guys, like it was like literally the saddest thing in my whole puzzle life that we could not finish this and not even the top 10 best puzzle bears in the world, not everyone were able to finish this so i was like i mean i didn't have really anything against um hard tricky puzzles i it just felt really sad to do this for two hours and then not to finish and i think also from the practical side um to be honest there was the teams category that day uh, that most people participated um up to three hours then there was individual category, a huge adrenaline rush, um, intense, up to one and a half hour, and then two hours of this. So I honestly just feel like considering the whole day, people who organize the event are puzzlers themselves, so they know that it's not easy to make a puzzle in a competition, you know, especially people who stand, or even if you sit, it's just like a lot of adrenaline. It takes a toll on your body and your mentality and then you put this so the very late for the Paris finals I was like bye 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 mm -mm. nope nope no 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 mm -mm. I nope so I'm kind of still not over this uh, anyway we finished in the final pair 26th um, and I think we had we were missing a little bit less than 200 pieces. I think we finished with 837 pieces in the end. So, yeah, but I, no, mm -mm, mm -mm. nope, 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 no, nope, no. Nope. Moving on. My absolute highlight of the week was commentating. So I was commentating on the qualification round of pairs for the third group. And that was just my favorite moment. I, that was just awesome. I wish I could have done that the whole event. Uh, my husband said I was glowing after that. It was so much fun. I wish to do much, 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 much more. Today. And very much like details. Like I like detailed puzzles for individual. The yeah. funny thing is that on the individual groups, we actually saw like all this scenery, <laughs> yeah. even a panorama puzzle. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> is that the one you had? Yes, in oh, the end, is. the last oh, group. Yeah. It was panorama and it was also the nature edition. I also want to thank you for all the good feedback on my commentating. And also it was so nice to get like all these messages during the competition that you've been following like the live stream and maybe see a couple seconds of me. And you know, sending me all these videos where I'm shown like it, it, it just meant a lot. So I really want to thank you everybody for that. And then one more thing that I was asked quite a lot during the competition is that why I'm not participating in teams. Uh, well, my original focus was always on the individual and then later on also the pairs. I was actually invited to a team somewhere in the spring i i think in finland and back then i never been part of this puzzle community i think i have literally just started my instagram like a week ago or so never participated any events even in finland and i think somebody just sent me a message that if i want to join the pairs and the teams 
um, with them and I was like, you know, what's your criteria? And the answer was literally like, as long as you're like human being and you're breathing, then like that's fine. And it's also like a plus or important if you can um, kind of like practice with us and actually arrive to the competition. I was like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. And I went to practice with them once. Um, I think, you know, we will get busy and then there wasn't any second practice. And then I think maybe a month later, they just uh, let me know that there's also other people now interested in that team. So they're gonna like choose the uh, best person for them. And at that point, because I knew that teams wasn't my focus and I was new in the community, I really don't want to take somebody else's like spot in the team. So I was like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I don't want to do this. I don't want to take anybody's spot. So please just take somebody else and like count me out. And I think that was also a really good call because I said I got sick on the last day in the world. Um, I have very low energy because I have some kind of like chronic health issues. So I didn't want to disappoint anybody. And as I said, I, I really don't want to take somebody else's spot who really wants to be on the teams and goes all the way to Spain. And then just a couple other pros and cons. I hope you don't think I'm like complaining too much. You have to consider that I'm a Finnish person. So how it works here, you know, we're the happiest country in the world. So we complain, then we do something about it or we help somebody else to do something about it. And then everything is better. And then we complain about that this thing and you know, the same. Da -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba thing goes on. So I think there's a couple of things that can be improved. I think everybody who was there can agree with me this. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. <laughs> I mean, on the women's side, the toilet paper was always... Like, there was no toilet paper for the most of the days. Um, I think this is an easy fix. Then the Ravensburger bags that the bristles were like supposed to be hidden in. Let me actually grab them one second. So the bags were absolutely um, not hiding the puzzle. First of all, because the puzzle was put this way into this bag like this. And the bags were not very well closed. So most of the time the puzzles were like, yeah, like this on the table. So you could see what the puzzle is even before you had the permission to go and sit on your table. I mean, it's like, I have so many pictures, even though I wasn't like peeking, but this is so obvious. You cannot kind of like unsee it. And also the same issue was with this uh, bigger bag. I will show you. So when we had the pairs final and this was inside this, so with the lightning of that place, I don't know if the camera is catching it, but this is very see-through. The camera is probably not catching it because now the light is coming from the wrong direction. But it's like you're standing there. You can already see this <laughs> puzzle. So I, I don't think there is anybody who can literally see the puzzle and while waiting would not discuss with their parents what they're already going to do. It's a little bit like I mean, you're literally showing the puzzle to us. So I think this can be fixed, uh, get better bags. And then I think my third thing is that um, they used quite a lot of Spanish. I feel like the main event was in Spanish. And then there was just, it wasn't even like, because my husband speaks Spanish natively. So they said something in Spanish long, da ba da ba da ba da. And then they kind of like said the same thing in English except that they didn't say the same thing. There was a lot of like content missing that was in the original Spanish thing. And I just think, of course, English is not a universal language either, but I think considering the participant uh, countries, I think this event should have been held mainly in English and then translated into Spanish and not the other way around, at least if it was done in a way that all the content wasn't translated. Mm. Just to consider that, you know, we want to XR puzzles and this event to actually have like a real status in sports, like similar to what Jess has. So I think for that, it's actually quite important. And I think we will look like 10 years 
ahead. This event cannot always be in Spanish or even in Spain. So I think a little bit more international vibe and considering that um, with the language they are using there would have been muy bueno. But then there were so many good things, like mainly good things, plenty of good things. You know, so many good things, the, the people, the atmosphere, the community, it was just amazing. Everybody was super nice, so welcoming. Um, you could just go and chat with anyone. Everybody was super sweet. Uh, I just loved it. And I mean, I'm an introvert. I don't generally talk with people that much. Uh, so it was really nice that people actually also came to talk to me. Uh, because obviously I do like to talk. But it's just really hard for me to go up to a stranger and like a, uh, start a conversation. So it was really, really nice there. I loved the city. The place was amazing. The dome was amazing. The food was amazing. We went three times to Taco Bell, once to Burger King and KFC. <laughs> Good food, yes. I have to mention our Hotel Nexus, they made my life so easy. I'm gonna go to the same place also next year for 100% sure. And also, I got this little gift. Go follow uh, Puzzle Problem in Instagram. This is from her, this is like the cutest thing ever. I got this from uh, Galit Puzzles. Call it dot puzzles uh, in Instagram. It's like a candy shaped as a pixel puzzle piece. So cute. I love this one as well. I was so touched that so many people who basically have nothing to do with puzzles were following me on Livestream in Finland. Anyway, I feel like there I could do like 50 different uh, videos about this event with different perspectives. But then on the other hand, I'm quite happy that the event is over. I can do now kind of like other puzzles and other puzzle videos. But let me know if you have any questions or something, uh, the content you want more from this event for me to do. Because I'm sure that in the end, like mix of all kind of videos is very welcome by you, right? Maybe. But anyway, only time will tell and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye. What the heck is the word?